Alright guys, welcome to your 33rd UDK tutorial, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you guys about lighting. To be honest, I'm probably going to be talking to you guys about lighting for like the next 4 or 5 tutorials because there is a ton of stuff to cover. So if you were just sitting there saying, you know what Bucky, I already know everything there is to know about lighting, just go ahead and hold L on your keyboard, click, and bam. All there is to know about lighting, we got a light on our level. Well, believe it or not, there's actually a lot more that goes into lighting that we can achieve some awesome effects. It can pretty much take our levels to the next level. Hmm, probably shouldn't use a level two times in one sentence. It could take our maps to the next level. There we go. When we learn to use lighting properly. So in this tutorial, all I'm going to be doing is showing you an alternative way to add lights and taking you through some of the more common interfaces in windows whenever you're working with lights so I'm not going to be teaching you a whole lot of new stuff in this tutorial I just want to show you around the lighting world so to speak so I already taught you guys one way in our last tutorials how to add lights to your maps and that's of course hold L on your keyboard and click and you got a light but this is pretty much like a work light like say you were working in a garage or something and you just needed anything to light up you know a dark area you're like hey dude give me a light and whatever he shine you know whether it's a flashlight or a light bulb or a lighter any way that you can light up that dark spot it's fine and that's basically what we're doing here we're basically throwing work lights up but whenever we build our level we want something a little more advanced that we have a lot more control over so typically how I'm gonna be adding lights is this actually before I even do that Here's my little nice sample room I made, but it's looking kind of bland, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a pillar real quick. Drag that out right there, and let me make sure in my top view it's somewhere around. And the reason I'm doing this is whenever I add a light, it's going to cast a shadow, and I want it, you know, something to cast a shadow rather than just walls. So that's why you needed to add something to your level. So now that you got your level with something in it, in this case a pillar, I'm going to show you guys the more common way that I like to add lights and that's go ahead and in your perspective view right click anywhere on the screen and from here click add actor and add a point light or add light parentheses point and from here it's basically the same as before it adds a light to your scene so go ahead and the first thing you're going to notice is this as soon as you add a light to your scene it changes from unlit mode to lit mode and that's because UDK realizes that now that you have a light you probably want to you know be able to see what's going on with it so the first thing you probably want to do is move it around a little bit using your translation tool translation mode is this called the translation tool I'm just gonna call it the move tool and you see that the shadow kinda changes depending on how you move the light you know as you could expect so let me go ahead and do this first and foremost notice how the shadow is right now it's kinda crisp and whenever you move your light you can really easily sh see how your shadow's moving but keep your eyes on the shadow right here and I'm gonna go ahead and build this all and it's gonna build and again keep your eyes on this shadow right here because I want you guys to notice what's going on you see how it kind of went from real crisp and really easy to see what was going on to kind of like fuzzy kind of give you a more realistic looking light this realistic looking light is called a shadow map and I just wanna I'm not gonna be talking about shadow maps in this tutorial I just wanna point out that there is a difference between this shadow and the fuzzy shadow and that's and we're gonna be talking about that later so if your shadows look different than me right now don't worry about it you're gonna understand later on so anyways the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is the light properties. Trust me, there is a lot more properties to this light than whether it's on or off. So in order to access the properties, just go ahead and select your light and hit F4 and check it out. Look at all of these properties just for light. I mean, we get that and that, and this is only like one tab. We get movement, display. Look at all this crap. You guys are thinking that, you know, whenever you put a light in your room or hang them up for your Christmas lights that there's on and off and that's it well in the UDK it gives you about six million options and we're actually going to be understanding what all these options mean but for now I just want to show you guys through the lighting properties window and give you guys a real quick tour of some of the most basic properties oh you have not registered your rubbery project 
Oh, this is interesting. Let me just register this now, right in the middle of my freaking tutorial. Yeah, I'll see you later, rubber. I don't care if my computer is vulnerable. So, anyways, go ahead and you're probably going to be looking at this the most. Go ahead and expand light, then light component, and then light component again. You'd think they would name this tab different than this tab, but they don't. Some of the more common and easy to understand properties are like the brightness, which is by default at one. But go ahead and slide that up, and you can see that it gets brighter obviously um, the light color if you want to change the overall color of your light to like green or something and of course if it casts shadows or not that's one of the more common ones if you uncheck that check it out my shadow is gone we do want that to cast shadows so these are just a bunch of different properties that you can change to kind of alter the way your light behaves so I'm not going to be talking about all these right now because well it's going to take me like five days first of all and this is tutorial is just introduction to lights I just want to show you guys that there are indeed a lot more light properties than just on and off so with that being said what's, what else do I want to go over well probably the only other thing I want to go over in this tutorial is this and I'll leave that light green well green looks good enough for now so the only other thing I, I want to go over is a nice little tip I want to give you. Actually, this is kind of bugging me, so if I can go ahead and change that back to white and hit OK, it might be easier to see what I'm about to tell you guys. Whenever you're working with lights, you have these little icons right here, and I just move that back. Wow, I'm a fool. Bucky, you fool. So let's go ahead and put that back and hit F4 again. Whenever you're working with lights, you have these icons right here. Now, what I like to do is I actually like to change the size of the icon depending on how big the light is. For example, if I'm like lighting up a road or a pathway and I have little kind of like night lights uh, going on along the sides of it, or nice little lights, I like to make the icon smaller. Whenever I have a big light to like symbolize headlights or a big lamp in the room, I like to make the icon bigger. It just gives me an idea of, it just makes it visually easy to understand because when you have a lot of lights, it's hard to imagine what lights are affecting the scene in different ways. So in order to make this icon bigger or smaller, go ahead to the display tab and go ahead to draw scale. And now if you scroll this up and down, you can see that your icon either shrinks or gross. Again, all this does is change how it visually looks. It doesn't change the properties of your light any. It just lets the programmer see either a small icon or a big icon. And another reason that you might want to change the size is because maybe you have a model of a lamp and you want to fit this icon inside it so it can't be like that big or else look what happens when I try to move it in the lamp. It's not going to work out. So you might want to, you know, make it small so you can fit it inside a model or something but that's another property that I use a whole bunch and uh, if you guys play around with this you'll probably find that you're using it a bunch too but for now I'm am obviously running out of time so in the next tutorial what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you guys some real cool effects that you can achieve with lights and also probably talking about some of those properties but for now that's all you guys get so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video